Hello everyone, uh, I am the Mad Computer Scientist and this is my workshop and it's been a long while since I did a video mostly due to work I have lots of have been having lots of work to do so haven't had time to be in the workshop as much but I wanted to show you a peculiar new addition to the workshop that I received and refurbished a bit uh, so I received this from another collector uh, and it's a very peculiar machine in that it's one of the very early IBM PC clones and it's a Japanese um, uh, design um, clone design and it's produced by San Sanyo Corporation uh, and it kind of looks like a VCR which is quite odd the case is very much like a, an 80s VCR and it's called the Sanyo MBC 55X the 55 series this is a 555 which means that it has two uh, five and a quarter inch floppy drives 160k floppy drives using a custom format like most most other things in the, on this machine it's custom it's it's big selling point is that it's it's an ibm pc sort of compatible because it's it, in, in fact it's not not really compatible at all but it runs uh, a specific custom version of uh of word star and calic star provided by micropro which were the go-to standards on the IBM PC for office work. So the idea here is to be, it was the first uh, PC uh, type thing that could run WordStar and CalcStar in your home for less, uh, like retailing for, for, for less uh, than a thousand dollars, which was the whole point. The idea was to have something that could run your office applications at home uh, at a much lower cost than the IBM PC. Hence, this thing showing up. It's a very odd peculiarity for many different reasons. First of all, uh, first of all, it was also released in Japan with the uh, MBC 55 uh, name, uh, and there. It had it was delivered with uh, CPM, the CPM operating system, whereas in 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 the rest of the world it was delivered with a custom version of MS DOS that was customized by Sanyo. Now, why was it customized? Why didn't they use MS DOS? First of all, this is a very early uh, clone designed in 1982, mainly retailing from. Uh, 1983 and onwards this is a very early ibm pc clone with custom hardware so it does it, it's it doesn't support the um like standard it, it has a character set in 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 rom which is custom to this machine it also has a custom um uh, like a, a custom video mode it uses custom video circuitry, which is not supported by standard MS-DOS, and it's definitely not IBM PC compatible. So if you had something that bypassed like standard BIOS routines for like text drawing or something, which or meaning most any IBM PC program, they wouldn't run on this. So this is highly incompatible, actually. Uh, but MicroPro, as I said, devised uh, bundled versions of WordStar and CalcStar to be bundled with the machine. Uh, WordStar is in this floppy drive here, um, the bundled copy, and the and this floppy drive has the boot because also unlike the IBM PC and many other subsequent clones, this one doesn't have a BIOS. It doesn't have a BIOS as such. It has a, a, a very very small loader in 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 ROM. Who's, that, that has as a main purpose to load the BIOS or, or like the startup routines and, and, and the hardware config from this floppy. So it will load the BIOS into RAM 
from floppy drive A, it doesn't have a an onboard uh, motherboard BIOS as such, which is weird. Uh, but so they that's also an incom like an incompatibility issue because it's not a standard BIOS either. It it, it it's not like it has a standard BIOS image like a, a, a um, uh, um, uh, like a co clone BIOS of some sort more common like in the of course in the compact machines but in other clones as well it's it's not a one to one uh, like uh, clone or re-implementation of the IBM BIOS either it's a it's an entirely custom uh, BIOS code which kind of mimics what the IBM PC does but only sort of so it's and and the compatibility issues became its ultimate downfall as other cheap clones were coming along with uh, close to 100% compatibility. Sunny, of course, released later models in the MBC series, which was, well, 99% compatible, as they say. Uh, this one, like I said, is definitely not. Also uses a custom disk format, which is also not MFM compatible. It uses like 160K FM, which is, <laughs> Uh, weird uh, and also not f fully readable like it's, it's it's not usable on IBM PC to format uh, disks on this machine and then use it on this machine however you could uh, it could technically read disks that were formatted on an IBM PC then used within this machine as long as they were 160k like single sector uh, formats, which means that you could bring your work, your saved document disk home from work and, 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 and work on this machine and then bring it back to work, which was kind of the entire point. Uh, it also was delivered with, so this uh, MS-DOS version from Sanyo has a custom io.sys, by the way, to talk to all of the weird exotic custom hardware in this thing, predominantly the video. Uh, circuitry the video circuitry is quite nice we'll look at that later on uh, uh so it's a it, it's it, it also had like uh, the, the default graphics mode is 640 by 400 uh, on three different bit planes so there's a bit plane for red and one for green and one for blue it also has custom Petsky like characters, which we'll look like at later, like a custom character set with also with graphical symbols, which you can access by pressing this graph key on the keyboard. Uh, so it's, so it has some weird peculiarities to it, uh, apart from looking exactly like an 80s VCR unit, which is <laughs> quite an interesting design decision. Uh, so you could also add like for more compatibility you could add it, it it used a custom monitor which you can you could buy for it which i don't have which also has this silver color matches the unit uh it also has composite out as default uh so so that's what i'll be using to test it uh so mono composite out you also get uh, composite color if you have a composite color monitor i will use it on a mono monitor because it looks better that way i think um and it has no text mode per se as i said it has no like ibm compatible text mode which is kind of weird uh, and causes most programs to fail when you run 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 them uh so so weird machine with a very limited use case uh there were some magazines dedicated uh, to this, uh, so like it, it was, it, it, it's, it's that published like basic games written in basic and so on, but they were short lived, like the machine itself, and, and, and most of the games were just like homebrew hacks in in basic. It didn't really have support for for playing any games. Uh, available for the IBM PC. You could write your own in BASIC. The BASIC was included on the disk. It's a very rudimentary version of MS-DOS, by the way, basically containing 
editor debugger basic and and, and command.com and of course the custom io.sys so the idea was to write your own basic software to run on this machine and to um, edit your your various office documents uh, at home at a cheap cost uh, it's an interesting idea but uh, predominantly uh, flawed uh, idea so uh, it, it 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 has uh, an, an interesting like it has its own circuitry designed by Sanyo uh, and their own custom ships and and like I said custom video uh, solution everything like that a very very early clone as well being designed in 1982 and retailing in 1983 this is, brings it uh, along with the with the compact into the very very first generation of uh, IBM PC clones um, and the very first one to reach a price below $1,000 or $1,100 uh, initially it, it, it was uh, that was the important unique selling point uh, so let's start by looking at this very weird you you could also get like as far as i've read you could get like up to 720k drives on on, on a later model called the 555-3 which had like two 720k drives uh this one is the earliest 555 with the double 160k uh, five and a quarter inch uh, floppy drives um, and let's first have a look at this weird um, unit itself uh, so so seeing as it doesn't uh, boot like uh, standard uh, like standard um, MS-DOS, uh, but but a very custom version of MS-DOS. You couldn't boot a, a, a generic version. Um, you would expect some other peculiarities as well with the custom chipset and so on. And you would be exactly right. Now let's start with this keyboard. That it, this is the original keyboard that the unit came with, and also the only keyboard that is actually working with this unit. As this thing is also custom, so. It has a custom connector here, which you would be fooled to think that this is like the uh, IBM XT standard, uh, PC and XT standard, but it's definitely not. The protocol is entirely different, and the keyboard controller is also custom. Now, first of all, peculiarity number one, the keyboard has, it has the reset button. So over here on the side is a small switch, which you press to reset the machine for uh, mysterious and unknown reasons. Um, function keys, only 10 of them. So <laughs> programs like WordStar, actually that was bundled with the machine. Also, I, I have cleaned this as well as I could, uh, but it's been sitting since then and also collecting some new dust. So it's, it's a bit dusty down here, but uh fairly good condition on the machine by the way some scratches and stuff on the surface which i tried to buff out but seeing the silver coating is like prone to that but otherwise it's quite a nice condition anyway and electronically i only had to do a few things i had to fix a broken tantalum capa capacitor i had to replace that and uh, not that it was actually making it do any weird stuff, but it was broken, so I replaced it anyway. Uh, and, and also looking it over inside, uh, resocketing the ships and so on, just to make sure there's no bad connection, but it, it appears to be working fine. So very little electronics work apart from cleaning and replacing a single capacitor. Uh, also took apart and looked at the membrane for this keyboard and the membrane is actually in immaculate condition, which is excellent. Uh, so, uh, because replacing that would be very difficult with the custom layout. So back to the function keys, a custom layout, 10 keys. And uh, WordStar that is delivered with the system uses more than like 10 function keys as, as does CalcStar, which leads to this very weird like shift control uh, kind of combination. Uh, and, and they're also stacked. 
unlike on the like on the IBM PC that's on the top row, the the stack on the side over here, you also have a more slim layer. This is a Fujitsu keyboard, by the way. It's made by Fujitsu, and it uses this is the Swedish layout. As this is a Swedish sold machine, so you can see the additional <laughs> keys. The whir that Swedes tend to use. If you've seen the Swedish chef on the Muppets, you know what I mean. Um, so, and over here you have a red break key, which is very, very red and indicates do not press me uh, key, uh, type of feel. Um, here you have the caps lock key, located down here, with a little light in it. And you have the aforementioned graph key, and the numlock key, by the way, is here, besides the numeric keypad. As you can see, the numeric keypad also has zero and double zero. Also. Um, but this graph key allows you to access a number of special uh, which we'll see later on in basic i will show you but a special graphical uh char, char set or character set that is available in 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 for use in basic for instance not in not in other programs but in in, in basic sort of like petsky on the commodore machines you can use that to draw uh, like simple pictorial characters uh, by pressing down this uh, graph uh, key, okay. Single control key over here, tab, uh, and a very, very small uh, backspace key over here. Uh, very, very large enter key, which is not very well suspended. As you can see, it wobbles around like a... Uh, okay, so the key switches are a kind of ADA uh, profile. They're this dome, in, in inverse dome-like uh, style, with a deeper uh, doming on the on the key finger placement keys like F and J, and these are linear uh, keys, linear switch keys, or rather membrane. It's a membrane at the bottom and a and a and a, and a plunger or or a spring on top has quite a nice key feel. Uh, the only issue is that you have to press the keys exactly from, the kind of clicky, but it has a very nice fluid feel to them, but you have to press them from, like exactly from the top, because otherwise they're like extremely hard to get. They, they only run smoothly if you hit them exactly from, from, from the top like this, otherwise they kind of, Kind of get stuck on the way down, uh, so uh, that that is a weird, bit uh, weird uh, design, but uh, it, it it feels very nice. This fidget keyboard actually feels nice, and the color scheme is actually brilliant. It has like a lovely color scheme, like dark brownish notes with like the silver here, and then this red break key, which kind of breaks off the entire. Um, a nice accent to it and also a very weird shape you can see this is also a membrane keyboard with a it's quite heavy with a metal backing so this is the front is plastic this is this metal on the back and the feet is quite weird because you can never have you can never have it completely flat because you either have this small feet or this large feet so there's always feet <laughs> so <laughs> that, that that's also a, a, a sort of weird peculiarity uh, now um onto the onto the machine itself let me just put this keyboard away for a second onto this weird beast itself um first of all yes Sorry, my finger got in the way of the camera. I'm actually filming on my phone now because my video camera died, uh, but never mind. Um, so, very much like an 80s VCR. 
and the whole case design is and it's also extremely heavy and there's another peculiarity that leads to it being heavy the, the number of peculiarities doesn't it doesn't stop here i will tell you um uh, so it's very much like a vcr if you look at the let me turn it over if you look at the grill on the side as well you can see like 80s very much 80s stereo equipment going on here so my guess is that they could have possibly refurbished like a stereo case because Sanyo was a big hi-fi producer. And that is actually not entirely impossible. You can see the switch here is also very much like stereo equipment uh, stuff. So it could be that they actually refurbed some sort of 80s stereo gear. And now as I turn this around, you will also get a shaky camera view of whatever uh on the back you see big chunky fuse here and uh, it's made in japan by the sanyo electric corporation company and this is the actually the 555-2 model as you can see here uh so it's a sweet it's it's i will i will see I will show you later the power supply design because it's quite interesting. It has a printer port on the back. And you have composite out and you have the video out for the specific custom monitor. And you also have a keyboard input here. And that's about it. Then you have these non-filled slots. Uh, which, as far as I know, on this model was actually never populated. These are just there, uh, but uh, there is no there's there's no way to mount anything to it like that that would hook up to this thing. Uh, so it's, so it has like a it's some sort of joystick slash paddle connector here on the back, like like if this was some sort of generic video game box that was just repurposed because as far as I can see, there's no way to hook this up. Maybe there is and I just don't know about it, but I don't see anything inside that would indicate as such. So speaking of insides, let's look inside this machine. Uh, well, I already removed the screws and just like you would expect, like a hi-fi unit, the cover just lives lifts right up like there and that's all here you can see also all the mess on my on my workshop desk now let's have a look inside the machine and hopefully you can see all of this without too much shading going on from the uh, from the stuff here let us start with one of the peculiar things if i can get to it and show you so here you have a bunch of custom ships I will not lift this because underneath here is, by the way, where I replaced one of the tantalum capacitors. Uh, I will not remove this one again because it was basically held to reassemble this. But you have the two floppy dies with a rubber spacer here for the case. And that's fairly straightforward. Going to the floppy connect, uh, controller, which is down here. Uh, and in... Let's just get a good... See if we can get a good view of... I don't think you can see it because my thumb is in the way, actually. Uh, let's move this cable. I wanted you to have a picture of of a specific ship down here, which is a bit hard to get to. Uh, well, custom logic ships there. And then a bunch of uh, very, very standard ships here, like LS logic ships, LS1, uh, uh, 74LS. Uh, gate ships um so sorry my finger getting in the way again um, let's see what else we can find down here uh, if we can find the custom there is a custom sanyo ship which is the actual um rom but it's very hard to see it's like in between this there you, now you have a good picture of it this, you can see it says Sanyo 55X NO. This is actually the, the custom, uh, the heart of the machine is in this custom Sanyo ship. And in there is also the, the, the loader, the, the, 
the small, small, small loader that will load the rest of the system up from flop drive A, which is this one. Um, and now peculiarity, except also here's another peculiarity, these barrel resistors, they're, they're absolutely hideous, but I kind of like them in a way. Uh, so uh, go, going to peculiarity again, there's a lot of those in this machine. This here, I uh, will show you if I can just adjust the, uh, give me a second, I'll just adjust the camera zoom a bit. And uh, let's see, oh, come on. I wanna have a good focus at this because this is very good. Now, here we go. You see this one? This is a Japan-made 8088, and it's also a white ceramic 8088, also an 8087, like a Coproc slot right next to it. But it's not an Intel. It's 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 made it's made in Japan, uh, white ceramic 8088. This is a very 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 rare uh, CPU. Uh, early old school type design uh, very much uh, 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 um, old school design with the white ceramic and the central die on top uh, so it's uh, it, it, it's very 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 old design on this 8088 it's also clocked at it's the only machine, the only clone that I know of that is actually slower than the IBM PC. For mysterious reasons, it's clocked at 3.6 megahertz instead of this traditional IBM PC 4.77 megahertz. So this is actually the only machine I know of that actually has a like a tested speed rating in like the bench PC benchmarking programs of the old days that is actually below one because the the comparison was uh, the ibm pc uh, and then normally you had like a, a faster um, setup like using one of the nec um higher clocked 8088 versions or something like that like eight or six eight twelve megahertz or whatever ten uh so this one is actually the only one that i know of that rates below one because this is slower, so in, instead of 4.77 megahertz, which is standard IBM PC clock rate, it runs at 3.6 megahertz. Yeah, so that's also a huge peculiarity, apart from this very old school design white ceramic uh, chip. Now, one further and potentially dangerous peculiarity um, is this. This is the reason why it's so the case is so heavy. This is also, from a safety perspective, not a very good design uh, because this is part of the power supply. The, the other part, the regulation, the regulator board is uh, down here. Uh, so, But you can see that this is actually an AC mains transformer, uh, a huge transformer uh, on the input. So input comes in here goes across here up to the switch and it's also grounded to the same metal case that you're actually touching which is also a nice touch uh, so it, it's actually wired to the uh, the ground to, to the case itself uh, so that's that has some issues uh, goes through the switch back again and into this huge block like a really heavy block of a mains transformer so this is where most of the magic happens this is where the voltage the mains voltage is taken down to some manageable i don't know the exact rating here but it's some sort of manageable voltage ac and then goes into the regulation board where it becomes dc which is shopped and and, and goes into this connector over here which we can also see is 
non-standard. Uh, so this is also not a, uh, a standard connector, but it's at least labeled with the voltages. You can see it does minus 12. It's hard to see. Minus 12, plus 12, plus 5, and then another plus 5 line and two zero volt lines. So this uh, meaning ground. So there's two, uh, like two black zero um, lines or dead lines or ground lines or whatever you like to call them. So it basically runs off minus 12 and plus 12 and plus 5 and across the board. And all that magic is happening down here on this regulator board with its big, big, big 10K microfarad, like bulky caps down here, which is also not properly <laughs> insulated, uh, I discovered when I, the, the, they have like a, a, a weird uh, way of possibly contacting the case on the bottom. Uh, and we can also see that this huge, uh, actually mains transformer, this entirely linear, this is a linear power supply using a transformer. It's, it's like, a, it's not a switching, it, it's, it's linear in this, in, in this part. Hence this huge transformer here. So it's just a linear feed of AC and it's also screwed directly to the metal uh, casing here. So if this insulation tape were to break, uh, that would mean you would possibly electrocute yourself uh, by touching the case. Um, so not, uh, uh, it's a cheaper design than having a proper switching power supply, obviously, a switch mode supply. It's much cheaper, also easier to construct and, 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 and more reliable, but it's also, there's also a relay up here, but, but it's, it's um, also extremely heavy, uh, bulky, uh, not as uh, safe, especially if you mount it like this. Um, and yeah, it's a cost saving measure, I think. But it's, it looks quite funny to, to, to actually see a, a computer with like a big, bulky, uh, linear transformer like this on the AC. Um, so it's like, um, yeah. Uh, and and besides the control ships and, and RAM and such here, we have a bunch of logic ships here. Uh, and of course the white ceramic 88 and that's pretty much pretty much it. It, it it really doesn't do much else then you have these you can see here there's a very very early like plastic caps it's, not, it, it's like a bakelite or plastic like materials it's not it, it's very very early design and these are like uh, fairly standard or simple design on the board itself but a lot of weirdness as well with this like first of all the power supply secondly the white ceramic 88 third the lower clock frequency than than the ibm pc this combined with the compatibility issues uh in general and and the weird version of ms dos and also the lack of a bios uh makes this a pretty weird clone um even even for being a very 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 early uh cloning attempt it, it, it it's kind of weird it's it's basically a machine of its own that just happens to run some some uh dos software uh, so so uh which was also specifically tailored for it and it's a so it's it, it's kind of like a machine on its own it's it's to me, it's not really a, like an IBM PC clone in, the, in, in that sense. Of course, it is a, a clone. It was marketed like a, an IBM PC compatible, but that's very far from the truth. It's, it, it's kind of like Sanyo's very own custom like a version of, of the IBM PC uh, type design rather than a, a, an outright clone, which is quite interesting. There's also, like I said, a custom video chip. 
defects in there, which is also not addressable in the same way as on the IBM PC. So none of the, like none of your game software or something using the video mode, using the video addressing directly, none of that will work uh, on this machine, yeah. which kind of limits the appeal sort of, because you could only run like uh, programs, like basic programs written specifically for it. Actually Turbo Pascal is also for, mysterious reasons are working on this one and can compile as long as you are not using the CRT unit because obviously as soon as you use the graphics libraries in Turbo Pascal, the ones that Borland developed for the IBM PC, that will of course fail. Uh, it will it, it will compile but it will crash on, on, on this machine seeing as the standard graphics modes are not supported. Uh, so, But as long as you write text-based programs you can actually write uh, elaborate programs in Turbo Pascal as well on this machine, but you would have to compile them specifically here and and then uh, avoid using like any fancy stuff, uh, and then it would probably run on this machine as well. Uh, needless to say, short-lived machine. Uh, it was on sale, I think, at least variations of it up until 1986 or something like that. But it's nice to have this weird oddity in in the workshop and now in, in, in a working condition. Uh, so let's say that, I'll say we, we fire it up and see how it looks when it's, uh, when it's running. So uh, here we have it out in the workshop, hooked up to the computer monitor 80, 80 column green uh, monochrome monitor. Here's the machine with the Sanyo custom boot disk inserted. So part of the software package and the only way to boot the machine. So let's try and start it. Like I said, it has no BIOS of its own. You can see it booting. Uh, so you can see it hooks like the, um, it, it uses the custom io.sys provided by Sanyo to give access to the hardware in the machine. Doesn't work with a regular MS-DOS. You can see that the base MS-DOS version that they patched is 1.24, so 1.25, so it's a very early version of MS-DOS on this disk that was included. Also, fun fact, it never turns off the disk light. Once you, once you load it from a disk, it's like the, the drive is constantly active. Uh, that's a feature, I guess. Uh, let's skip the date. Let's see what's on the base. And uh, this is hooked up to composite on the monitor. So it's monochrome composite, which is the way to hook it up. Unless you have the special monitor for it or the um, CGA card. Uh, neither of which I have, so this is what we get, but I kind of like this composite look. So let's look at what's on the base disk that got included with the system. So basically nothing except for uh, the debugger and basic, because remember this thing has a slimmed down MS-DOS version and the idea here is to make it possible for you to uh, use your work software like WordStar and CalcStar at home at a cheap cost, uh, but not much else unless you wrote, and it's also, like I said, not, not en entirely compatible. So it doesn't really run um, standard IBM software as such because of the custom hardware. Uh, so you have to basically write your own software and for that, you are giving, given a version of BASIC, which is uh, version 1.31. 1 and you can see that we have 172k free after BASIC is loaded. This is a standard Microsoft BASIC, so we can do like standard BASIC stuff. I know, one-handed typing going on here. One interesting thing is this graph key which we were discussing you can press this uh, it lights up and then you can use graphical characters like this in basic so it's like kind of like petsky or something 
but this only and it can also print them but this only works in 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 like a basic we can we can try that by adding some graphical character like you know these uh, then we turn it off and we like let's do something let's do something real quick here uh, I don't know. this is a standard uh, basic in one-handed typing by the way this is these are linear key switches so they feel feel kind of nice uh, but it's hard to if you hit them at an angle like this if they stick together a lot but this or they stick down a lot and they uh, you have to hit them from from the top very nice keycaps by the way uh, but you have to hit them very much from the top but otherwise they have quite a nice linear feel uh, not as much scratchiness in them maybe a little light but to the touch but there's a fair amount of resistance let's let's just type something simple here you know so let's do this um i know um, simple program right. bit hard to do the to do the one-handed typing here now let's, let's run this and there you can see the graphical characters getting printed using the basic so you can use the graph this key to get some sort of petsky like graph but that doesn't work in like in in regular use but it works in basic which is quite interesting so it has an extended character set uh, but let's let's uh, say we're only 20 years old those were the days right yeah and let's try the other condition you can see this is just a standard basic interpreter and then like yeah come on ha uh, so this is like how you would have written you have would have to write maybe a large portion of your own custom software to to use the machine because it, it it didn't really come with much software it did however come with a basic demo which we can look at and uh, so this is the retailer demo uh, that was used pre assumingly when this was in like a storeroom window or something uh, so we can load that and we can run it and we can see it will show some demo effects uh, I don't have the color monitor so say no and here you can see it draw very very slowly this Sanyo logo this is a nice shot of the machine by the way while, while it's drawing this uh, extremely uh, slow um, representation of the Sanyo logo um, yeah and it's filling in the logo as you can see so this is um, very slow drawing routine this is like the included demo let's let it run for a while and it will show you yeah okay so it shows you the character set you can use including all of these nifty graphical characters i assume uh, and then it goes back to uh, drawing uh, redrawing this logo again this is a basic program, by the way, that is included on the disk. So you can look at this to see how this is actually done in, in code. But 
suffice to say, this is a rather rudimentary demo, probably, like I said, meant for the store display. Um, it shows some of the capabilities of the machine. Uh, there's a lot of these sequences to this, actually. Haven't watched all of them, but it does. Okay, so it shows you how to draw. It shows you that it can draw <laughs> geometric figures uh, uh, stuff. Uh, later on, it will show you like how to do some rudimentary line drawing. It shows you how to draw diagrams and stuff like that. Uh, it can also be used. The, the key purpose here is selling this as like a, a, a basic capable business machine that you can use in your home. Now, as we are getting bored with this, that's used in Nifty Reset Key we were talking about before. We press the Reset Key on the keyboard. There is actually one on the keyboard. Pressing that one will reset the machine. And we boot from disk, ignore this. And I have one of the disks in the B drive here that is also included with the basic um, package. From, from Sanyo, and this is the custom version of WordStar. So let's switch over to V. I can look at that disk as well. So the <laughs> custom version of WordStar only delivered with this machine. So you can start that, and if you know, you should know WordStar. You can see here a Micro Pro 1983. Uh, so it includes a, a very early version of WordStar, which was bundled with the machine so that you could edit at home and, and then bring your uh, edits and so on to work. Let's uh, press D, for instance, we get a new file. Let's give it like, and let's give it name test. It should create a new file on the disk for us. Just one-handed typing again. Okay, so we have the standard. This is basically standard word star. So you could press like, I don't know, let's do a, um, let's do an indentation, which is the F2 key. And you can see the function keys, like I said before, are stacked. Which is, so function key two would be here. So yeah, let's increase the indentation and then write something like this. Oops. And then it should go back. This keyboard uh, ha has a quite a nice feel to it. Uh, and of course, you could use the standard navigational keys of uh, WordStar, like Control A, Shift Word, Control F, right. Uh, you can do like if you have multiple lines, like you can do like uh, Control W, Control uh, all of these, Control E for a lineup, for instance. So this, so you can navigate through the text. Uh, and basically, the standard on-screen menu, if I can reach it, that control O, I guess, uh, still works. So you get all of the basic functions of WordStar. WordStar is, by the way, an excellent editor in itself. But, like I said, this is the only disk I have now. But there were packaged with... It was packaged with WordStar and CalcStar, of Micro software, and also EasyWriter, which is a simpler uh, word processor. Use. Let's go back here. So you could use a simpler uh, word processor, and it also supports, like if you press F5 here, for instance. There you go. So it supports the WordStar printer codes, like in this case, underline. F5 is underlined. Uh, so you can have uh, printer codes so that when you print this, this would result in an underline of the following um, parts of the line. Uh, so so WordStar is powerful word processing. But the idea here is clearly to use this software to, to write uh, documents and, do, and use CalcStar to do like... Um, 
tabulated uh, calculations at home and then bring it to work and run it on your IBM PC because this is meant like the, sh the cheap alternative that you have at home, which is not a bad idea in itself. But problem is there's no other software available for it, more or less. So you would have to... There's some games written in basic that were included with like the magazines. There were, a, it was, a, the, there existed a dedicated magazine for this machine, which had like four issues and something like that, um, where you had some basic programs and stuff, but you were pretty much on your own because of the custom nature of the machine. You were pretty much on your own to, to write, uh, to write uh, like other business software and stuff that you might need or, or, or software for, for your home. Uh, so it didn't really take off in a way, but it's, it looks nice. And it's a good word at being machine. The keys are actually, the key feels pretty nice. You can see them, it's pretty nice. Um, but uh, so that shows you what the machine does when it's operational. And as you can see, it doesn't do very much, but it does, WordStar, CalcStar, and uh, Basic, which is probably the the, uh, the big things that it actually can do. Uh, but that in itself is probably enough for why you would purchase this machine for the, for the for the lower cost because you wanted to work from home, right? So so the idea is not not entirely bad, even though the compatibility is sort of wonky. And you need custom versions of WordStar, and you need a custom version of, of, of the MS-DOS, as you saw, to be able to even use the machine, which is quite annoying. Uh, but uh, all in all, uh, I mean, it works and it runs nicely now, so, and I kind of like it. So, yeah, that's, that's it for this small uh, overview of this addition to the workshop.